Welcome to Oklahoma Gardening. Over the past couple of years, we've stressed quite a bit the importance of building up the organic matter in your garden soil. Now you can build it up by putting in compost or peat moss or the leaves that you rake up in your yard in the fall. Or one other way that you can use is what we do is growing green manure crops. Now, if you'll remember, in our vegetable garden, we have three sections in the main garden. Each year, we take one of those sections and devote it entirely to a succession of different green manure crops to build up the organic matter in the soil. When we first started with this garden, it's a silt loam, it's a heavy, heavy soil, and we had quite a bit of problems with it when we first started working. Now, after two years of pretty intensive cover cropping, we have built up the soil so that it's very nice to work with now. It's a dramatic improvement. So we recommend that you do do something to get your organic matter up in your soil. As I said, we have one third of our garden set aside each year for cover crops. You may not want to do that in your own garden, but even if you don't, you can still work in a green manure crop into your rotation. Later, we'll be planting some winter rye in a section that was our tomatoes this summer. So you can always squeeze some green manure crop into your, into your garden, even if you don't devote a whole year to it. Our section started off this early spring. We tilled under our winter rye, then put in a cover crop of buckwheat, followed that by the mung beans, which we showed you a month or two ago. And now the mung beans have been tilled under. You can see quite a bit of straw still left from the mung beans, and now we've planted it in several of our cool season green manure crops. Those are what we're going to show you again today. Of your choices, you have four main choices. Two of them are legumes, which mean that they will fix their own nitrogen. You don't need to supply nitrogen fertilizer if they're inoculated properly. Now each legume crop has its own individual strain of inoculant, of the rhizobium bacteria. And you must be careful to get the right strain or it won't work. It won't fix any nitrogen unless you match the strain of bacteria with the type of legume that you're growing. These are Austrian winter peas. They look very much like regular garden English peas and they are very closely related. They'll need the same strain of rhizobium as your garden English peas. Our seedlings are just coming up. These have been planted just about two weeks now. Your Austrian winter pea is a good, hardy legume winter cover crop. It is hardy in central Oklahoma, southern Oklahoma. Up in the Panhandle area, you may have problems with it in some winters with not being hardy. But it does grow very nice, has large succulent stems and leaves. It's somewhat easier to till under in the spring than our next, our other legume cover crop option, and that's hairy vetch. Now the hairy vetch is a much hardier plant. It will grow anywhere in Oklahoma. Actually, it'll grow anywhere up into northern United States and Canada. So it will grow in any section of Oklahoma it needs a separate, different strain of rhizobium from the winter pea. Make certain you have the right one. You inoculate it in the same way. You moisten the seed in a bucket, pour off any excess water, then add your inoculant powder and mix that well so that each individual seed has a coating of the inoculant. That way, as soon as the root starts to germinate, the root comes in contact with the bacteria spores and it can form the nodules, which is where the nitrogen is actually fixed. Here, again, this is the same age planting of hairy vetch as the winter peas. You see, it's a much finer growth habit. It's the hairy vetch is a twining plant, very fine foliage and stems. It will form a mat of foliage. If you let it get too mature, let it grow too tall and too long, it may be difficult to till under with a regular rototiller. You may have to mow it first to get it short enough and eaten up enough to get it under with the tiller. But if you catch it when it's still quite succulent, 
you should have no problems with turning it under with the rototiller. The other two winter cover crops or winter green manure crops are your winter rye or winter wheat. Now these are your grain crops. Winter wheat is the exact same crop that you that is being planted for grain all over Oklahoma. Winter rye is just like the grain that rye bread is made out of, but you don't grow these for the grain, you just grow them for its just its foliage, and next spring you will till it under before it gets a chance to send up the flower head and form any grain. Now, as I said, either winter rye or winter wheat will work. If you go, winter rye is generally the better of the two, it forms a little bit more organic matter. You may have problems when you go in trying to buy winter rye with them trying to sell you either annual ryegrass or perennial ryegrass. Those are not what you want. Those are lawn grasses. You want winter rye. It's the grain. As you can see, the difference in the size of the grain is very dramatic. If they try to sell you something that looks as small as this, it's a lawn grass. It's, it's not what you want. Now, the winter wheat and winter rye are not legumes. They don't fix any nitrogen from the air. You will need to add nitrogen fertilizer to get good growth out of them. Now, you'll need somewhere around one pound of actual nitrogen per thousand square feet for your winter wheat or winter rye. Now, the seeding rates for all of these crops, the Austrian winter pea is going to need about one and three quarters pound of seed per thousand square feet. Hairy vetch will need one pound of seed per thousand square feet. It's a smaller seed, so you don't need as many pounds of it to get the number of seeds that you need. The winter wheat and the winter rye, you'll want two pounds of seed per thousand square feet. And remember on those legumes to inoculate them properly. Now let's go to that section I was talking about where we had our tomatoes and actually plant some winter rye. The first step in planting a green manure crop is to get your soil prepared. You go to till it up just like you would for planting any garden vegetable. Now if you remember this is where we had our three rows of tomatoes. Now the outside two rows had a straw mulch, the middle row didn't. And you may be able to see some of the extra straw that's been tilled under from that other row. We've added ammonium nitrate at the rate of one pound of actual nitrogen per thousand square feet to the whole area. Now I've come back and added some extra nitrogen to the part that had the straw in it. The reason is straw is a, is a high carbon, low nitrogen material. As it breaks down, it will tie up the nitrogen that's in the soil. So if we didn't add extra nitrogen, what we would see was that this half of the cover crop wouldn't be doing well because it wouldn't have as much nitrogen fertilizer compared to this half. By adding extra, that means we have enough nitrogen to break down the straw and grow the cover crop. Now we've tilled that nit the nitrogen fertilizer in. We've got the seed bed all set. The next step is to actually spread the seed. Now the rates that I gave you earlier are minimum rates, minimum seeding rates. That's the least amount you'd need to get a good stand of any of these cover crops. I generally like to at least double, if not triple, the seeding rate. For a small area, the seed cost is minimal, and the extra seed that you put down is extra assurance that you will get a good stand in the end. So a little bit of extra seed, two or three times that minimum recommended rate, is good insurance. Spread it evenly. And remember, if you're using one of the legume, legume crops, the Austrian winter pea or the hairy vetch, you would inoculate these with the inoculant first before spreading the seed. Next step is taking rake the seed lightly. This is just to get it covered with a little bit of soil. If you've got a large area to do and don't want to spend 
half your afternoon bent over raking in seed, you can take and set your rototiller at a very shallow setting and just go back over it and that'll get your seed worked in just to that top quarter, half an inch, just so you have good seed, seed coverage by the soil so the seed doesn't dry out as it's starting to emerge. The final step, and probably one of the most critical, is to water the bed in and to keep it moist. These seeds are very close to the surface and as that root germinates and starts coming out of the seed, if it dries out, that seed will die and you won't get a good stand. If you have relatively cool conditions, a light sprinkling once an evening will be sufficient. If we get back into hot weather, you may need to come in, do it in the evening and in the morning to keep that seed bed moist. As soon as you get good emergence, like we saw earlier, you can start cutting down to just normal watering when it gets dry. You won't need the daily waterings. Now timing on these fall cover crops. You want generally to wait until about mid-September and it's best if you can get them planted before the end of October. That way you'll get good foliage growth in the fall so that you go into winter with a good cover on the soil so you have less erosion from splashing rain and water runoff. If, for instance, you've got a fall, some sort of fall crop that you're growing, vegetable crop, and you can't put your cover crop in until late, you can still sow it sometime in early November. You won't get much growth in the fall, but if you have time to let it grow in the spring, you can still get a good amount of organic matter just in the fall. If it's late, it'll just, the seedlings will just get up a little bit and stay that way until they can grow in spring. But if you can get them in relatively early in the fall, you can get all of your growth in the fall. That way you, get, you can get it tilled in in late winter, early spring, and it won't be in the way for your spring garden.